Hello guys, let's all sit down already. Okay, hello guys. Uh, welcome to your service or worship. Thank you for making the time to come to your service in person or online. Let's open with a word of prayer. Dear God, I pray and thank you for the youths that have come today in good health or they are online. I pray for those that are not feeling too well right now. I pray that those songs that are going to be sang right now are going to speak to them. In Jesus' name, Amen. In 2 Peter 3 verse 9, it says, The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not waiting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. Let's all rise to sing our first song, Build My Life. Me. 
are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. In Proverbs 3, 5 to 6, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to Him, and He will make your path straight. Let's listen to the words as we surrender our lives to Him. Let's sing our next song, I Surrender. for this time of fellowship and that you will bless the speaker today as he speaks to us about you in jesus name i pray amen you may all be seated
for the offering. Dear God, I would like to thank you for all the willing hearts of the youth that have given generously to you. And I would also like to pray that the offering will be used for the furtherance of your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, announcements. Thank you, Kayla. Hello. Hello. Oh, hello. Okay. Okay, um, thanks, Kayla, for leading worship today. So hi, everyone. It's so nice to see you here. Welcome for youth service, whether you're here today in person or joining us online. Okay, so the first announcement that we have is, guess what, guys? Youth camp is in two weeks. <laughs> Woohoo! Two weeks. Okay, so now we have a confirmed fee of $20. Wow, so cheap. Woohoo! Okay, so um, um, if you could please pay our CAMCOM the money soon, that would be much appreciated. And also, if you haven't signed up yet, this is your sign to sign up, okay, because it's in two weeks' time. So if you're planning to go and you haven't yet filled out the form, please fill it out as soon as possible to uh, make things smooth for us so we can plan the best camp possible. Also, because of the social distancing measures, now it's most likely that we'll be staying over in houses. So um, if you haven't already, uh, we really appreciate it if you could go home and help us ask your parents if they'd be willing to open their houses. Most of the camp will happen in church, but we do need homes for sleeping arrangements. So yeah, if you could go home and clarify with your parents again, um, that would be really helpful. Okay, so next up is during the youth camp, we'll be having an evangelistic event on the 13th of December, which you can invite your friends for. So it's a virtual bubble tea heist which is conducted by Singapore's Youth for Christ. And through this event, we hope to have a fun of fun and fellowship with you and your friends, and so you can share the gospel with them through this event. So do invite as many friends as you can, because there's no restrictions, because it'll be held online. And so it's really convenient for them. So um, take notes on the 13th of December, and you can check the announcements chat for more information. Okay, next up, it's time to be an announcer, guys. This is the last youth service of the year. So next year, we are really looking for more announcers. So if you're interested, um, we have yet to reach out to you for the people who indicated interest last week. But if there's anyone else who would love the opportunity to come up, or Tim, you look interested to come up and give announcements, then now's your time to shine. OK, so 2021 is almost over. And do you know what that means? That means that 2022 is coming, and we'll be conducting service a little differently next year. So this means that we'll be stopping the live stream and all youth services will be resuming as fully physical services. Okay, so if that means that it's a little bit difficult for you to come to service next year, we recommend you ask your, asking your parents to consider coming for a Saturday evening service at 5.30 so that you can come along with them. Youth service will be from 4.30 to 6. Yeah, so if you could make that arrangement with your parents, that would be good. And also, if you have any questions or queries, you can reach out to Pastor Liang Wei or um, myself or anyone else. Okay, we understand that this is a little bit hard and it's a bit confusing, but there'll be more details sent out to your parents later. So, yeah, just take note that for next year's service will resume fully f as a fully physical service. And also, okay, today is the last youth service of the year, and we'll be having blow in blow. So remember to have fun at Blow and Blow later, and please don't come for service next week because you'll be the only one. Okay, now I'd like to hand the time to our speaker today. Just think this. A very good afternoon to everybody. Uh, it's my privilege and I'm very glad to be here. Uh, I have been um, what, um, very much like you, uh, youth uh, in this church in Mount Carmel for many, many, many years. 
Uh, I've been seated in this place uh, just like you have, and it's really my hope that as I share on today's topic, okay, I am able to edify you and to uh, honor God with uh, some of the, my testimonies that I'd like to share. So today's topic is about identity. And we know that, um, you know, we see many people being lost. They're not sure who they are. And because of all the many influences uh, in the media, in the people uh, around us, we are very confused sometimes as to who we are. So what does it mean to have some understanding about how our identity might be jeopardized or unsure in these uh, modern times? And how can we find an identity in Christ as such? So since uh, this sharing is about identity, please permit myself to introduce a little bit about who I am. So my name is Isaac, uh, and if any of you were probably uh, in the, came from the church kindergarten here, you will probably know my father. So my father is Uncle Malcolm. Okay? He has been the church warden here for many, many years. And because uh, we used to live here, uh, I have pretty much literally grown up in church for, since uh, I came here in primary two. For 28 years, I lived in church. I could come into every, any door, more or less, that I would like to. Uh, I played at the playground, uh, hung around uh, for dinners uh, after uh, church weddings. And of course, every Sunday uh, after service or after Sunday school, my pals will all hang out at my place and we'll do all kinds of fun stuff. So um, that's a bit, that's who I was. Who I am right now uh, is that I'm a general paper teacher at Anglo-Chinese Junior College. Anybody from AC? No? <laughs> okay, uh, so some of you are in JC, some of you will be moving on to JC after your O levels and so forth. Um, I have to admit that today will be a little bit of an occupational hazard. I have a handout okay, for all of you here. So if you don't have one, uh, maybe there's not enough copies, but if there are some more, can you please distribute to the rest? Uh, and as a teacher, I guess I can't help it, but if you guys could take notes, you know, uh, there are a few blank uh, spaces for you to fill in some of the things that I'll be sharing, so that'll be good too. So, um, yes. All right, so please permit me to, uh, you know, begin today's sermon. In general paper, we cover social issues. And um, even for those of you who learn social studies in secondary school, you are very well aware that there is a lot of political strife today. There are these things called the culture wars, uh, pretty much prevalent in the US, but of course uh, spreading out throughout most of Europe, in Asia. And you can see that there are a lot of violent protests, there are a lot of arguments, there's a very strong polarization of society in which different factions start to get very angry and oppose one another vehemently. We have racial issues, Black Lives Matter. We have LGBTQ uh, supporters who are vehemently against those who come from the conservative side, uh, especially for the Christians. I wonder whether amongst yourselves, within your friends, you might have had these debates too. You might, you, know, you might be asked, hey, why, why do Christians believe this? Or why do Christians you know, oppress that? Uh, you know, don't you know that um, people can be who they want to be? Don't you know that uh, there are people who basically, hey, we are born this way. You, know? you, you can't fault us for being like this. You can't oppress us. That is just discrimination. As it is also, uh, besides these competing uh, identities, uh, many of us also might come from a place of mixed identities. There are, Singapore is becoming more and more cosmopolitan. Uh, we have many uh, people who marry someone from another country, from another race. 
So some of you, some of you or your friends might also be uh, someone who have mixed parentage. So maybe you have uh, an Indian father and a Chinese mother. And sometimes some of us might be confused. Oh, you know, who, who, whose culture should I follow? Uh, what am I really? So all these all come to affect us to be really uncertain of who we are sometimes. So, as we see that there are many conflicting and competing claimants to who you are, essentially we see that there are many people who want you to join their side. These are the celebrities, the friends, the family members who all want you to, to have an identity that basically comes to their, uh, to their side and of course to, to win you over in that sense. So, you might feel tugged you might feel pulled on so many levels. And then it's like, oh, I don't know, so many people, you know, what do I do? Who am I? What, what's going on? Okay? And all these can really make us feel very uncertain. But please let me assure you above all else, you are a child of God. But what does that mean? What does that mean to be a child of God? Okay? So later as we look at the Bible verses, well, we'll learn a bit more about that. So, um, in typical GP teacher fashion, okay, uh, I have something that I'd like you to fill up. There are three blank lines uh, in your handout. Okay? Um, so, one thing that you will need to uh, like you to fill in, and you can go back home and do some reflection upon it. Identity, first of all, is inherited. It is inherited. These are things that you can inherit from your parents, your family, uh, your culture. You can inherit it possibly even from your school. Some of you might come from, well, like similar to me, ACS. You might inherit some of these traditions. Okay? Or you come from uh, another uh, you know, school from, with a long history and you inherit those things. Okay? Then, there are, uh, identity is also innate. Innate. In other words, it is born within. It is something that perhaps biologically you are predisposed to. Okay? It is something that emotionally you are, you are someone who is a bit more impatient. Uh, maybe you, your character, who you are, is someone who is more introverted or quiet by nature. So that's the second one, innate. Then the third one is that it is cultivated. Through our life experiences, we learn many things, we are taught many things, we choose many things on who we want to become. Of course, the more I train myself in piano, I learn discipline. And that discipline becomes part of me. And in that sense, the third one is identity is also cultivated. So, um, Take a moment also now to just contemplate your own identity. I'll just give you one or two minutes to just reflect and write something very quickly. Ask yourself this and fill in the first thing that comes to mind. What is one significant aspect of who you are? In one or two words. What is one significant aspect of who I am? Write this, write, write this on your paper, okay, and later you can go back home and uh, you know, reflect a little deeper on it. Now, uh, still to lay down a bit more context, you might also ask, why is it important for me to know who I am? Why is it good for me to know my identity? I would say these three things. First of all, when you have your identity, this impacts how you see the world. Is the world a dangerous place? Is this world something that holds promises of a good life? Uh, it is something that uh, you really can't, uh, you look forward so much to having. So this all stems from who you are and that impacts uh, how you see the world. This also, uh, your identity, it also shapes how you interpret your experiences. So for anything that you might experience in your life, 
Okay, you might. Would you see this as a good thing? Would you see this as, as ah, tama yeah, die already la, ah, gong case la. Okay, there's there's no hope for anything. Ah, you know. So your identity also does very much interpret your uh help to help you to interpret your experiences. And then the next. Your identity will shape the kind of actions you will therefore uh, take once you have gone through certain experiences. So, I walk down the road. I see uh, a poor cat starving, meowing. You know, obviously in hunger. What do I do? What kind of identity do you have? Haha, <laughs> silly cat. Eh. Okay. Or are you the uh, not my business? Eh, silly cat. Bye bye. Go away. Okay, or are you moved by compassion? Like, oh no, okay, um, where's the 7 Eleven? Mm, okay, nearest one there, let me rush there, buy a small can of uh, cat food, rush back, and then feed the cat. So, all these things really do shape you to a large extent, how you interpret things, so on and so forth. Very quickly, I am a parent. My son is four years old, and uh, something that perhaps you can also relate to is that um, for Singaporeans, we have a strong marker of identity, and it starts with K. What is that? Yasu, yeah, thank you very much, right? So, Yasu parents, see, when we are a Yasu parent, that shapes how we see the world. Okay, so when, when you, my children, okay, have all these major national exams, okay, do I see the exam as something that is, uh, you know, a good thing to have or is this something that will make or break my child? Okay, and then therefore, if my son comes back with a weak PSLE score, how do I interpret this, you know, event? And then therefore, from there, how would I react to my son? Okay, so if I internalize the Gyasu parent syndrome, you know, so that, that is something that is obviously of very, of very much impact. And perhaps some of you, okay, uh, you might be impacted by how your parents see themselves. But of course, I do urge you to be understanding of your parents. Uh, it's a very pressurizing place to be in in Singapore. And the stress okay the competition is very real okay but uh, i make my point so we have many kinds of issues where we are struggling with our identity and one of the greatest uh, things that we could uh, ever face the worst of despair is to really not know who we are some of you are a little older, some of you are in your early teens, but it is in this age group that we, you know, uh, psychologists have observed that this is the time and the phase of life that we struggle with who we are uh, the most. Of course, there are many adults who, even in their 30s or 40s or even older, who will struggle with who they are, um, but yet, you know, uh, it's very easy to get lost. So, uh, before I pass the time on to our worship leader to just uh, take a moment to read the Bible passage, all I can uh, emphasize to you once yet again, who you are is to be found in the great I Am. It is to be found in God, it is to be found in Christ. Alright, uh, can I just invite the worship leader to just come forward to read us the Bible passage? See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. Hey, thank you. So from this Bible passage, I would like to draw out uh, three main points. Uh, they are captured in your handouts. You can fill in some notes as you go along. So the first, 
the first identity marker that we can derive from today's passage to for us to understand who we are is that we are beloved of God. Okay, if any of you might be able to recognize this picture, uh, do you know where this is taken from? This is a scene from uh, the very popular The Chosen, okay, fantastic Bible TV series, the best, uh, you know, live action Bible thing I've ever watched. I encourage you to, you know, take the holidays and, you know, binge watch the three seasons. I think next season is coming out soon. So the person here on the side of Jesus is John. And for those of you who are familiar with the Bible, in the New Testament, you will notice that in his own book that he wrote, John never ever names himself John as he's writing about himself. And in fact, what the term that is used for John in the, Bible, in the book is always the disciple Jesus loved. Now, there are many commentators who have tried to interpret or guess uh, what it could mean. Uh, did it mean that John had a special place uh, in the disciples, that Jesus gave him a special status or privilege within the group? Uh, that could be a possibility, but there's one interpretation that I very much like. This is a reflection that John defines himself primarily as the disciple Jesus loved. Imagine this. If I were to ask you to describe yourself, as I just did, could you ever name and think of saying, ah, when you call me, when you think of me, when you want to know who I am, I am someone Jesus loves. What a powerful thing it is. What a deep spiritual insight it is for us to be able to come to this place that my key, my key, my key defining trait of who I am is that I'm actually loved by Jesus. So, when we are loved by Jesus, we are provided for, we are died for. We could be many things. We could be weak in our studies. We could have failed over and over again in many other things in life. We could be sinners, lost in certain addictions, uh, being terrible in so many ways, flawed and uh, harmful to perhaps even to others or even to ourselves. But yet, one thing that is important that we must learn and know about ourselves is that we are loved. We are redeemed. And because we have worth, I am not a failure. I am not a disappointment. I am not an outcast. I am, a, I am accepted. I am that lost coin that Jesus has searched so hard for and he has found me and he loves me that much. I, I want to be known uh, as the one whom Jesus loves. The next identity marker, number two, is that we are his children. So, as I introduced myself a little earlier, you would have noticed that I raised my father. <laughs> of course, within Carmel uh, and Bible Church even, my father is pretty well known. Sometimes you might still see him around. Um, it took me a very long time for me to reconcile this. I am my father's son. Of course, many of us, uh, you, you would be also recognized by, ah, you are uncle so-and-so's daughter, you are uh, auntie ABC's uh, husband, you know? So, but this is something that we need to come and accept and understand of who we are, that identity is very much relationship-based. We are not an island. We are not uh, somebody isolated within themselves. We are people who are connected with uh, others and as such, all the more so when we are connected to someone significant, that bolsters uh, who we are in that sense. So for us to understand that we are God's children, so first of all, uh, we belong to Him. 
we are redeemed we are owned by him he has raised us and if i were to put it succinctly where i am today who i am now i owe it all to him so as i mentioned i grew up here in this church because of my father's job here in this uh, well church i came to have many experiences I have been shaped in so many powerful ways such that who I am now is very much thanks to him and because of his choice to serve God as a full-time warden uh, in this building. And so, drawing this parallel, when we come to see that we are God's children, he has raised us, who we are, we owe it all to him. So take a moment. What are the things that God has put into your life? How has God shaped you, taught you, spoken to you such that he is shaping your identity all this time and even now? Identity marker three. So here we want to be like Jesus. But before I go into that, uh, let us take a, let, let us shift uh, context a little bit. How many of you here like horror films? <laughs> okay, a few hands, all right. Now, what is one of the scariest things that you might ever see from a horror show? All right, demonic possession. <laughs> Okay, when the demon possesses the kid, okay, or the victim, you know, he speaks in a growly, deep voice that is unnatural, sounds very bestial, has the strength of ten men. I actually wanted to put a more gruesome picture, but I thought maybe not so nice, lah, you know, to <laughs> do this in youth service. But yes, this is the demon possessed man at the tomb that Jesus, you know, cast out the demons. So wow, you know, demon possession, murderous, angry uncontrollable you know can break walls you know lift you know 100 kg you know things and all that so by contrast um, what does it then mean if we are instead to be possessed of the holy spirit now many of us will think that ah, okay i'm a christian i've accepted christ you know the holy spirit dwells in me yeah Okay, that's it. Uh, no superpowers, you know, oh, no super strength, you know, whatever. But imagine this, that if demonic possession can have such a powerful impact in transforming the character or shaping the identity of somebody, how much more so when the, the Holy Spirit in all His holiness, righteousness, patience, self-control, etc., etc., come to live within us? What strength we would have? What power to do good that will live within us because we are uh, you know, filled with the Holy Spirit. And as we are filled with the Holy to how we become more and more like Jesus. To be like Jesus, one can try to imitate, to try and copy. But that only goes so far. For us to really truly be more like Jesus, we do need to uh, invite, to accept, and receive the Holy Spirit dwelling within us. And here this is where I would like to contrast the demonic possession to something a little more interesting uh, that maybe you can relate to. <laughs> okay, uh, if you can't tell, this is the Lego picture of Moses. Okay, he's holding the two tablets in his hands. And uh, this is uh, depicted by his radiant face where Moses went up to the mountain to come uh, meet with God face to face. And when he descended down from the mountain to join with the Israelites, he was so touched by God's holiness that he was positively radiating with God's righteousness and his presence uh, you know, in front of the people. So, um, what we, I would like to convey to you is when we are filled with the Holy Spirit, when we 
come face to face with God and walk closely with Him, we would then take on God's characteristics. Uh, also because, as I said, the Holy Spirit is dwelling within us. We have read in the Bible that whenever the disciples ask Jesus to show them the Father, Jesus simply tells them, Hey, you want to know the Father? You want to see Him? Here, here I am. Okay? To see Jesus is to see the Father. And likewise, through using this uh, extrapolation to Moses, that Moses is reflecting the glory and the righteousness of God, we too, as we are filled with the Holy Spirit, being like Jesus, should also start to reflect to others, to everyone around us, to see Christ living in us. So, identity is about us having Jesus in us. So, when people see you, do they see Christ? Do they see His mercy? Do they see His righteousness? Do they sense okay, that you are someone different? Do people look at you and like, hmm, this person is something extraordinary. And perhaps for people who, you know, are wrongdoers, they, they love to lie, they love falsehoods and so forth, are some of these people actually uncomfortable in your presence because you really reflect uh, God uh, God's presence in your life. And so, therefore, um, to find our identity in Christ, it's not about demonic possession, but it is about the possession, the being filled with the Holy Spirit. Okay. It's very easy for me to come up here, give you a few sermon points, you know, oh, Bible, this and that, this and that. Identity is something that is a big struggle for many of us. There are people who are unsure, they, are, they struggle, they, they struggle with sin, they struggle with temptation, they want to be one thing, but yet they know they should be something else. So, I don't want to come here today and just tell you, this is it, this is the answer. To know yourself, Step one, two, three. No, it is never that way. It is never so uh, clear cut and straightforward. So, uh, here are just some things that some of you might be going through. As a Christian, you may feel that you are trying to conform so much to the expectations laid down upon you. It could be from your parents, or it could be from uh, you know the church itself. Doesn't this take away from who I am? You know, I, I, I really want to smoke. You know, I want to do something bad. I want to do something, you know, try. I mean, I don't know. I never tried before, right? You know, so, but yet, to be Christian is like, eh, where am I? You know, am I here or am I there? And if I have ever dabbled in any of these things, does this make me not a Christian? How then do I reconcile some of these things? Is Christianity also then an imposition of traits that I may not really want? Okay, very real thing. I don't, uh, some of us may struggle with our sexuality, you know, and of course the Bible defines for us uh, what godly sexuality is, but yet it's like the, I'm not sure. Can I accept this? How then again do I make sense of all this? And if I were to really follow all of these things, am I just being a robot? I may have identity, but it's not my own. It's forced upon me. Many second generation, third generation Christians quit the church. They leave uh, the faith to, uh, completely because they feel that all this has been shoved down, pressed upon them by their parents or by their families, so on and so forth. I really hope and pray that for all of you here before me, that if you are feeling this way, find someone to talk to about this. And of course, do pray about it and try and find some good answers that can help you find some uh, resolution. Then, there are those of us who try our best to be the good, you know, Christian guy, God girl. Uh, I struggled this in my secondary school a lot. I tried to be the goody two-shoes, 
So much so that in uh, my secondary school, uh, my taunting classmates actually called me God Boy. Like, hey, hey, God Boy, huh? Why? Hey, come, let's go and you know muck up the, uh, you know, let let let's steal some chemistry, uh, you know, chemicals from the lab. They're like, oh, not joining us? Okay, then, God Boy. Hey, bye bye. Okay, so what you you might feel like, hey, I'm trying so hard to be a good Christian, but why then do I sometimes still feel like a fraud? Am I faking it? Am I just telling a lie? Am I just pretending to be something that I'm not? So all these are very, very real issues. And again, as I hope, okay, you are able to uh, speak with someone, get some uh, to counsel you, and find some answers. Okay, a few things uh, to conclude. One of the powerful things that I've also learned from the Bible comes from Revelation two seventeen. There it says, "God will give us a new name, and is inscribed on a white stone, and this is upon Judgment Day. This is a name that will describe who you truly are, and only the one who receives it will truly will know what this name is." So this is a promise that our true self, whom God created us to be, wishes for us to be, we will receive it at the end of our entire journey. So keep your eyes looking forward to this. I want to know who I am. I want to fulfill my destiny of who I am supposed to be, and so. Take the time as you go through your life to discover this. Keep seeking the Lord, and of course, even as you stumble and fall, struggle through many trials and、uh, fail in many things, always know that you are still a work in progress, and you are yet to be fully refined. So,、uh, I have a few、uh, discussion questions for you, which is in your handout. I believe、uh, you will take some time to do some discussion for this. Okay, so you can just、uh, take a quick look over here for a short moment. And finally, I would like to wrap up today's session by sharing this song with you, and you can find the lyrics on the reverse side of your handout. And this is from my favorite、uh, Christian performer. His name is Michael Card, and this is something that he sings about. This is who you are. Okay, let's just take a few minutes to listen to the song.
past He gives a new identity That's grounded in the King And a new reality It's found in loving kindness And a mercy that is free You can become the child That you were always meant to be The kingdom, you're the sorrowful, the meek The gentle, starving ones who are the strongest when you're weak You're always making peace each time You suffer for what's right You freely offer mercy From a heart I fill with light The flavor of my world comes through the seasoning of your life. Remember when the darkness looms, you were meant to be the light. A light that can't be hidden, or we'll see it from afar. This is who you are. Allow me to close in prayer for everybody. Oh Lord God, we are so lost. This world has so many struggles, conflicts, temptations that we sometimes find it so hard to know who we are, to follow you in the right way, and it's just so difficult, Lord. But here, as we realize that you are the one who loves us so, you are the one who has transformed us by your presence and that God, uh, you are always there to fill us with your Holy Spirit so that we can be more and more like you. So Father, I pray for my brothers and sisters here before me, these young people uh, who have so many things ahead in life, that your presence, your spirit may always be there for uh, guiding them through and that, Lord, uh, you may fill them with who you are, that they can be who they truly are meant to be as well. So, Lord, we give you thanks, and may you bless everyone here uh, today. In Jesus' name, Amen. God wants us to be loved by Him and wants us to come back to Him as His children, even if we feel that we are not worthy, because He will always love us. Let's stand and sing our last song today, Who You Say I Am. Yes.
yes I am In my father's house There's a place for me I'm a child of God Yes I am Now the benediction. Let us pray. May the grace of God the Father assure you that there is always a place for you in his heart. May the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross assure you that he is preparing a place for you. And may the fellowship of the Holy Spirit assure you that even on this side of eternity, you are never alone. In Jesus' name, amen.